Hello folks, today we're going to be talking about team building in Angel Legion, specifically where you should put your heroes on your team. We've talked about this a little bit before, but I thought we need to update our guides on this just because the way people are approaching game modes has slightly changed and I feel like we can cover more game modes than just player versus player. So we'll be talking about where you should put your heroes on your lineup to maximize their performance. Before we do though, let me remind you today's video is sponsored by the makers of this game, Angel Legion. So if you want to go ahead and check this game out, maybe you've never played it before, it's called Angel Legion. You can get it for free on any app store, whether it's on the iOS app store, the Google Play app store, whatever, you can go ahead and download. It's also on Steam actually for free as well. Give it a play. Heck, you might find out it's the game you've been needing to scratch that idle game itch. And hopefully, if you do choose to play it, this guide can help you in your Angel Legion journey. Anyway, let's talk about hero positioning in Angel Legion. So, to understand where you should put your heroes in your team, we need to talk about how teams work. So let's go into the arena, as this is the best place to show you how your teams work. So defensively, or just in general, you can have three heroes on the front, and three heroes on the back, and every team must run Mysterious Girl Maya. So the first thing you need to know is how Maya's different artifacts affect the bonuses you will receive. If she's running the katana, she will buff herself and the hero in the column that she's in. So if I move Raging Angel here, you'll see she's always buffed. If Maya's in the front, doesn't really matter. If Maya's in the back, doesn't really matter. Because Raging Angel and Maya share a column, they are both getting buffed. Now, typically, if I was using a Katana Maya, I would try and put her in the front line because she has an ability that reduces the amount of damage she takes, so she can make quite a good tank. That means behind Maya, if I was using the Katana, I would want to put a damage dealing hero. Now, if you're using the Katana, there's a few really good damage dealing heroes that you could consider for your team. The most prominent is Phantom Blade. Most people are using Phantom Blade on their Katana teams. She's extraordinarily good, but you can run a Phantom Blade on any team. Another good hero to consider that's a very solid damage dealer on Katana lineups is Shura Killer, as she is able to one-shot heroes very, very well. That said though, you might be running a hybrid team where you can run a Valkyrie. Even though she's a Scythe hero, she can still benefit a team regardless of the artifact Maya has. And if you wanted to run her on the back line, you could maybe consider Deadly Shadow. We'll be talking more about her later on today. Now, how do things change then if I'm going to run the Scythe? Well, Scythe Maya buffs the entire front line. So the first thing you have to do is put Maya on the front there. Then you'll want to be running probably some damage dealers on the front line as they will receive Maya's weapon buff for being on the front line. You can see here that Dark Shooter and Butterfly Girl are receiving that. Some good damage dealers to consider for Scythe would be Valkyrie again. She's extraordinarily good, so you could definitely consider running a frontline Valkyrie. And another great one to consider is Filial Spirit Mulan. She has an incredible ability where she does more damage the more repetitively she hits opponents. So she's incredible against the simulated alpha, but she can be really good in PvP too, especially once you've killed some of the enemy heroes already. So consider her as one of your frontline options as well. That said though, you don't always want to just go ahead and put tons of damage dealers on the front line. If you're running Rifle, you actually want to be running Maya on the back line with your damage dealers there. That's why I run Time Jumper at the back, as she makes an exceptionally good damage dealer for Rifle teams. Time Guardian is in there too but she's not necessarily a damage dealer. So that brings us on to the next thing we want to talk about, and that's crowd control heroes. If you didn't know how this game works, basically this number here in the top left is your power level. And when you go ahead and attack someone, whether it's in PvP or in PvE, whoever's team is the most powerful will have priority. And what that means is you get to go first. So if I take a look at the person who's ranked 91, We'll go ahead and watch, and you'll see because they're a higher rank than me, my heroes are going to move second, so their hero will immediately go first. So on this team, their first hero to act is a Time Guardian there, and you see I got hit straight away. And actually that stunned me, so I was then not even able to attack with my first hero. So you saw firsthand right there that it's a really good idea, especially if you're the person going first, to run a crowd control hero in slot 1 because they're first to move. And if you have priority, then you will act before the opponent does, and you can hopefully crowd control their slot one hero, completely preventing them 
from stopping you. So some good options to go ahead and put in the front line are any heroes that offer amazing crowd control. Popular choices are Time Guardian and Deadly Shadow. If you're running a rifle team, you could consider Dark Shooter as well or Butterfly Girl for her energy steal. But what you want is someone on that front line, slot one, who is able to crowd control. The only time I would consider something different is if you are slower than your opponent because you do not have priority. If that's the case, then putting your best crowd control hero in slot one is going to make them completely useless because they're just going to take that crowd control and do nothing. There are some ways, however, to play around that. We'll talk about that in a second, but let's just assume you are going to get crowd controlled. In that case, I would rather put my crowd control hero in slot four because that means all the opponent's frontline heroes have acted they've already done their abilities and your slot four hero who's behind slot one is not going to get touched by any of their crowd control almost every crowd control hero in the game except for maybe time jumper will always aim for the front line in that case you're going to be wanting to put your good crowd control hero in slot four where they're safe and not going to get crowd controlled that means even if you're slower they'll still have a chance to crowd control the opponent's heroes which means they're not going to do any of their abilities in round two which gives you an opportunity to come back even though you are losing the speed war that way you can try and steal back the fight and give yourself an edge and that's why we see a lot now in player versus player especially people running backline deadly shadow despite her being an incredible hero who many people for ages ran in slot one people are now opting to run her in slot four just because it is able to keep her safe against people who are quicker than you and in that particular circumstance your deadly shadow might just steal the win so you'll see a lot of people running her in slot one if they're faster that's a great idea however if you are slower slot four is the way to go. So typically for a defensive lineup where you're not in control of who attacks you, that's mostly where people put Deadly Shadow in slot four. But when you're the aggressor and you know someone's slower, then you can get away with putting her in slot one. Now, a lot of people like me, for example, like to have two crowd control heroes. So I have Dark Shooter in slot one. So if I'm quicker, my Dark Shooter can come out and crowd control the opponent. That can be really, really helpful. But I also have Time Guardian in slot four just in case I'm slower. So sometimes having that best of both worlds situation is a really good idea because that means you've got a chance for being good if you're faster and amazing if you're slower. So that can really help you to clutch your fight. As well, I've also got Butterfly Girl in slot two. She's also also a form of control hero she steals energy so by running all three of these together my goal is to stop my opponents from doing anything and hopefully gain an edge that way you'll notice though i don't opt to run a healer but that's because i'm running so much control if you wanted a little bit less crowd control consider putting in a sakura dancer she can remove the crowd control that you receive with her purify ability which is really really strong and that can help you to come back from for example a slot four crowd control hero because it will shut down your whole front line going into the next round if you're running a slot six sakura dancer she'll remove that crowd control giving you the edge so if you find there are a lot of people running deadly shadows in the back line in your pvp meta consider putting a sakura dancer in slot six on your team now another thing you should think about with sakura dancer is even though we said that putting maya in line with your damage heroes is a good idea. Sakura Dancer's healing scales with her attack. So if you did want to get the most out of the healing from Sakura Dancer, putting her with your Maya is not necessarily a bad idea. That said, if you're running Scythe, I would still opt on having Sakura Dancer in the back line, so that bonus won't be yours. But maybe with Katana, it could be a thing. Have a think about it, have a play around, and it might be just for you that having a little bit more attack on Sakura Dancer is a good thing. Now, on top of all that stuff, Sakura Dancer is sometimes a hero you'll want to put in slot one, but that's in one very specific game mode, but it would be wrong of me not to cover it. If you go to the simulated alpha, you go ahead and fight this boss here. Now, the thing about simulated alpha that catches a lot of people off guard is the alpha's active skill buffs its defenses and debuffs your aggressive abilities. Now, there's nothing you can do about the simulated alpha's defenses. All you need to know is it lasts for one round, but the debuff on your team is crippling and lasts for multiple rounds so a lot of people who do very well in simulated alpha they run sakura dancer so all these big guys at the top like avrilla they're running sakura dancer 
on their team to maximize their damage. So Cora Dancer, because of her Purify, will remove that debuff, and therefore you want to put her in slot 1 so that she goes before the rest of your team and can remove it. Even though the enemy's defenses are really high and you probably won't do much damage, putting her in slot 1 has one significant edge. If she fails to Purify the first time, she can still try again the second before your heroes get a free round where your opponent has no defenses. Because you get that one round where the enemy's got their defenses up, and then into the next one, Sakura Dancer can still do an active and remove the negative debuff just in case she missed her chance. So a slot one Sakura Dancer is really good if you're going against the simulated alpha. In fact, I'd argue if you're going to be competitive in this game mode, she's compulsory. So the final way you can avoid crowd control effects and consider who should be at the front or at the back is actually an ability called crit resistance. I've heard before in comment sections or even in the discord for Angel Legion that people think the crit resistance is this useless stat. It isn't. If you take a look at heroes like Time Guardian or Deadly Shadow, a lot of their effects to crowd control your team come from skills that rely on critical hits. If you look at her passive, for example, when her combo skill deals a critical hit, she will stun enemies for one round. So it's in your interests to run crit resistance because that can prevent this Deadly Shadow from critting you. And if she doesn't crit you, then my friends, you're not going to get stunned. A Deadly Shadow is the most popular PvP hero that people are running, so it's important in game modes like PvP that you run crit resistance. However, if you're fighting the battlefield, or you're going in campaign and you're not facing Deadly Shadows or Time Guardians, heroes that do benefit from extra CC if they crit, then you could optimize your team by running for more damage, perhaps running a little bit more crit yourself, or even moving your stats towards dodge so that you can prevent getting hit entirely. Dodge is a really good ability, but it is limited to how high you can get it. In fact, having a combination of crit resistance and dodge can even further the chance that Deadly Shadow doesn't touch you, because there's a chance that you dodge her, and there's a chance that you resist the crit. But more on this, I'd probably go for damage reduction and dodge rather than crit resistance if you were going to fight in PvE game modes like Campaign and Battlefield, because the probability that you're facing a Time Guardian or a Deadly Shadow is extraordinarily slim. So hopefully with all these tips, you can put together a really, really nice team with a mixture of damage dealers, healers, and crowd control heroes, and it will all come together to be a beautiful cocktail of damage and control. Watch out in PvP for people who are higher levels than you because they will, of course, have better damage and therefore they will also be faster than you. So it's a double-edged sword. You're more likely to lose. But perhaps by running a slot four crowd control hero, you can actually have a good chance of clawing that fight back. Unless, of course, they're smart enough to run Sakura Dancer in slot 6, in which case there's a chance they could remove your Purify. If that's the case, a little trick I'll leave with you is to run a Shura Killer and run her in slot 6 as well. Perhaps your Shura Killer can one-shot their Sakura Dancer so that she's not going to be a pest for the entire fight. In fact, if you put Shora Killer in slot 3, she'll still hunt that backline hero down because Shora Killer hits the backline. So, an option for you there. Slot 3 or slot 6, Shora Killer can go and snipe Sakura Dancers. That said, if their Sakura Dancer is in slot 5, you'll need Shora Killer in slot 2 or slot 5 yourself. That, of course, will only work on a Katana team, but that seems to be the most popular one that people are running. If you're running a Scythe team, though, just have a good mixture of energy feed and crowd control and you should be okay. Heck, you might just clutch some crazy hits with Mulan if you opt on running her. Anyway, guys, hopefully you found this video useful. If you've got any more tips and tricks for team building in Angel Legion, drop them in the comment section down below. I'd love to see them. And if you found this helpful, let me know as well. If you've got any questions, also ask, and I'll see you next time, guys. Don't forget, you can get this game for free on the iOS App Store, on the Google Play Store, and it's on Steam. And hopefully, I'll see you in the servers. Until next time, have a great week, and of course, happy idling.